This video is meant to help you better understand the proposed surgery to treat your Crohn's disease and what you can expect as part of the surgical treatment. What is the digestive tract? The digestive tract includes the esophagus, stomach, small intestines, also called the small bowel, and large intestines, also called the large bowel or colon. The last part of the small intestine is the terminal ileum. The major function of the terminal ileum is to absorb vitamins, for example, B12, and water from the intestinal contents. The ileocecal valve connects the terminal ileum and the first part of the colon, which is called the cecum. The ileocecal valve is responsible for controlling the emptying of the contents of the terminal ileum into the colon. The colon is a tube-shaped organ about 5 feet in length that absorbs water from the stool to change its consistency from liquid to solid stool. What is Crohn's disease? Crohn's disease is one of the inflammatory bowel diseases, IBD, that can affect any part of the bowel from gum to bum and can affect all layers of the bowel wall. Crohn's disease typically affects the part of the bowel where the terminal ileum and the cecum connect. Crohn's disease is treated by medications, but sometimes surgery is required to remove sections of diseased bowel. People with Crohn's can also have complications, such as strictures, narrowing, or fistulas, where tunnel tracts occur between parts of the body and require surgery to be removed. What is a stricture? A stricture is a narrowing of the bowel caused by inflammation and scarring when the body tries to heal. When a stricture becomes too narrowed, food and bowel contents cannot get through and an obstruction occurs. Medications might reduce the inflammation but often, chronic strictures are comprised of scar tissue, and surgery may be recommended to remove the stricture. What is a fistula? A fistula is a tunnel that forms between two or more parts of the body, for example, between bowel loops. Once a fistula has formed, it is hard to resolve by medications and surgery to resect that part of the bowel may be required. What is a resection? A resection of the bowel means that the surgeon will remove the diseased section of your bowel. The most common type of surgery for Crohn's disease is the ileocolic resection, where a short part of the terminal ileum, the ileocecal valve, and the cecum are removed. The healthy sections of the bowels are reconnected at the end of the surgery. For most people with Crohn's disease who have strictures, fistulas, or severely diseased bowel that is not responding to medications, resection to remove the affected area is recommended. Before the operation can be performed, additional tests may be required. Blood work. You will have several routine blood tests, including blood count and nutritional markers, to ensure you are healthy enough to undergo surgery. Imaging. You may undergo an updated CT scan or MRI of the abdomen to assess the extent of Crohn's disease and to aid the surgeon in planning the surgery. 
There are also some things you can do before your operation to improve your recovery. Ensure you maintain your weight without causing recurrent obstructions. Avoid certain foods that have caused problems in the past and be counseled by a dietitian to adjust your diet if needed. If you smoke, cut down or quit. Smoking can increase the risk of complications and the risk of Crohn's recurrence. Ensure you're receiving iron supplementation if you are anemic or have low iron. Avoid steroids if possible. Ensure you're maintaining physical activity to avoid being out of shape prior to surgery. Please follow surgery preparation instructions provided by your surgeon. In an ileocolic resection, you will lie on your back on the operating table and your anesthesiologist will induce general anesthesia. Once you are asleep, a breathing tube will be placed in your throat and a catheter tube will be placed into your bladder to monitor how much urine you are producing during the procedure. The urinary catheter may be left in for one or two days while you are recovering in the hospital. Your body will be covered in a sterile drape before the operation begins. In most cases, this operation is performed through minimally invasive surgery, also called laparoscopic surgery or keyhole surgery. Using this technique, decreases your risk of infection and your level of pain after the operation. If you receive laparoscopic surgery, you will have one larger incision around your belly button and two to three additional small incisions on your abdomen. For some patients, it is safer to perform this operation through an open incision. If this is the case, you will require a longer stay in the hospital after the operation. Your surgeon will discuss which method is most appropriate for you. If you are undergoing a laparoscopic ileocolic resection, your surgeon will inflate your abdomen with carbon dioxide gas to create space to conduct the operation. They will insert a camera called a laparoscope, into your abdomen that will allow the surgeon to see throughout the procedure. The surgeon will then remove the disease segment, disconnecting it from the rest of the bowel. Once the disease segment is removed, the end of healthy colon is connected to the end of healthy small intestine so that your digestive tract is once again a continuous tube. Like any operation, there are risks when having this surgery. There is a small chance of infection at the surgical incision and a small chance of bleeding during the operation. There is also a small chance of a leak from the connection between the colon and small intestine. If this occurs, you will need intravenous antibiotics and may require an additional procedure or operation depending on the severity of the leak. In the case of a leak, there may be a small chance that you will end up having a stoma. To make a stoma, the surgeon brings the small or large bowel to the skin through an opening in the abdominal wall. The stool empties out of this opening into an outside bag. This is a temporary measure and the stoma can be reversed in a future procedure. Most patients who have had an ileocolic resection will recover for three to five days in hospital 
and continue the recovery at home. While you are in the hospital, any pain that you have will be managed using medication that is injected or taken as pills, depending on your level of nausea. Your diet after the operation is completely dependent on your appetite and if you have any nausea. Most patients are on fluids the night of the operation and can start a low residue diet starting on the day after surgery. Either way, there is no risk of damage to the colon or the new connection by eating. One of the most important things you can do to help speed your recovery is to start moving around on the day after your operation. This includes getting out of bed, walking to the washroom to use the toilet, and walking around the hospital unit or hospital halls. Although you will go home several days after your surgery, you will continue recovering at home. When leaving the hospital, you'll be given a prescription for narcotics to help with pain management. Usually, you'll be able to switch to over-the-counter medications such as Tylenol, a week after. If you have pain that is not controlled with these medications, it may be a sign that you are suffering from a complication. If you experience severe abdominal pain, fevers, or vomiting, please contact your surgeon's office and visit the emergency department for assessment. Once your pain is manageable with over-the-counter medications, and you feel comfortable doing so, you may safely return to working and driving. You can start doing regular cardiovascular exercise one week after your operation and return to normal activities within three to four weeks apart from lifting. Avoid lifting anything heavier than 10 to 15 pounds or five to seven kilograms for six weeks. After that, you can slowly work towards heavier lifting. Just remember to start low and go slow. Four to six weeks after your surgery, you will return to the surgery clinic so that the surgical team can assess your recovery and discuss the results of your surgery. In the first six months after your operation, you may have more frequent bowel movements as your body accommodates to the new connection. Crohn's disease is a chronic illness and you will continue to be followed by your gastroenterologist to continue management of your disease. If you were on medications for your Crohn's disease before the surgery, depending on which medications you were on, and the reasons for your surgery, you may continue, switch, or stop medications after the surgery. Please be sure to discuss this with your gastroenterologist about the plan for your medications as these decisions are individualized for each patient. Since the terminal ileum is responsible for absorbing vitamin B12 if you had a long segment removed or multiple resections of the terminal ileum, you may require vitamin B12 replacement. Your family physician or gastroenterologist will advise you based on your blood tests. Since the ileocecal valve is removed in the surgery, you may have more frequent bowel movements than before. This is normal and your gastroenterologist can advise on management. If you had recurrent obstructions and the disease segment was removed, you should be able to resume and liberate your diet under the guidance of your dietitian and gastroenterologist. Please do not hesitate to contact your healthcare provider if you have any additional questions. Crohn's disease is a lifelong condition but your healthcare team will be ready to support you in every step of the way.